Lesson 35, I will represent the multiplication of n times a over b as n times a over b. Now you might be thinking, well, what does that mean? Well, let me kind of show you what this means. First of all, n represents just any whole number. Let me get my pen going here. All right, so n could be any whole number four. So let's just say I've got four times, and a over b just represents any fraction. So let's just say the fraction is two-thirds. So we're going to talk about how do you solve this. And n times a over b is going to be the way that we solve it, and I'm going to show you what that means really quickly. But this is basically the kinds of problems that we're going to talk about today. What happens when you have a whole number times a fraction? All right, so in your math journal, I want you to go ahead and write today's date, and I want you to write multiply n times a fraction, because that's pretty much what we're going to be doing today. All right, so I'm going to do things a little bit differently today. I'm actually going to be writing on this piece of paper, maybe on the next one, just to kind of show you what's going on here, okay? So let's take any frac let's take any whole number. So let's just say that n equals 7, and we're going to multiply that times 2 thirds. So you might be thinking, hmm, well, 7 times 2 thirds is going to mean 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds. I want you to write this with me. How many times do you think I'm going to have to write 2 thirds? I'm going to have to write it 7 times, right? Because that's what it means. 7 times 2 thirds means I have 2 thirds 7 times. So I've got it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's talk about what this would be for a minute. Two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So this would be fourteen thirds. So let's look at what happened here. First of all, did anything happen to the thirds? No, nothing happened to the thirds because the thirds are our unit. So we can think of seven times two thirds as this. Seven times two thirds. And I want you to write this in your math journal too. This is my unit. It's the same thing as saying seven times two centimeters or seven times two inches. Nothing happens to those thirds. So seven times two thirds is the same thing as seven times two, which is 14 thirds. And 14 thirds can also be written like this. So this is where they say n times a over b because that's what happened. We took 7 times the numerator, which in this case was 2, and we put that over b because b did not change. b was the unit, which was the thirds. Whenever you're adding, you're subtracting, or you're multiplying fractions times a whole number, nothing happens to your units. Your units stay the same. Okay, so let's talk about what this looks like on our problem set today, okay? So go ahead and get out your problem set. Go ahead and write your name. We're going to do a little bit of modeling here to prove why this is true. <clears throat> so first of all, it says draw and label a tape diagram to show the following are true. It's true that 8 fifths equals 4 times 2 fifths equals 4 times 2 fifths. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a tape diagram. Oops, we're not going to use a circle though. All right, we're going to draw a tape diagram. And I'm going to label this. I'm going to put this into eight parts, but these are going to be fifths, okay? So I know that I have greater than one hoe here, but I'm going to label these into eight parts. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this in half, divide this in half, divide this in half, and then divide my fourths in half. So now I have eight parts. But remember, these are not eighths. They're actually fifths. So if I wanted to label the whole, one, two, three, four, five, this would be the whole. Okay, because these are fifths. So I'm just going to write inside each of these one fifth. Oh, no, hold on. This says. Okay, so I'm going to go through here and I'm going to write one-fifth inside all of these. So 
So remember, our whole purpose here is to prove that 8 fifths is the same thing as 4 times 2 fifths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group my fifths together like this. I'm putting groups of 2, and then I'm going to put 2 fifths, 2 fifths, 2 fifths, 2 fifths. Okay, so this shows that I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. I've got 2 fifths 4 times, and that equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 fifths. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate. Okay, so remember, today we're talking about a whole number times a fraction. And this is the same thing as 4 times 2 fifths. And 4 times 2 is 8, so we've got 8 fifths. So that's the whole point of this very first question. Okay, let's take a look at number 2. So we're going to do the same thing again, only this time we're going to label 10 sixes. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my tape diagram, and I'm going to divide it into 10 parts. Even though these are not tenths, they're actually sixes. So when I draw tenths, I'm going to divide it in half. I can't divide it in half again, but I can divide each half into five parts. So that means I'm going to draw four lines. One, two, three, four. So now that I have five on this side, one, two, three, four. So these are fifths, okay? Or excuse me, these are sixes. So if I wanted to go one, two, three, four, five, six, I could do this to show that this is the whole. I really don't have to do that because I'm actually going to come back here and label all of these one sixth. But that's okay. Just so you are aware that these are not tenths, even though I divided my tape diagram into ten parts, I really was just trying to show that I had ten sixes. So now it says I've got five times two sixes. So again, I'm going to make groups of two, just like I did in the last model. And this would be two sixes, two sixes, two sixes, two sixes, two sixes. So I'm showing that I've got two sixes five times. One, two, three, four, five, and that equals ten sixes. So again, nothing's happening to my units. The sixes stay the same. The only thing that's changing is the numerator because I've got one six ten times, which would be ten sixes. All right, so now we're going to write the expression in unit form to solve. So remember, the unit is our fraction. For example, if I say seven times two thirds, thirds are my units. So I'm going to write this in unit form by writing it like this seven times two thirds. This is unit form. So now all I have to do is say 7 times 2, which is 14. My unit stays the same. And now I can write this other fraction, 14 thirds. Let's try one more together, and then I bet you'll be ready to do a couple by yourself. All right, so we've got 4 times 2 fourths, which is the same thing as 8 fourths which is the same thing as 8 fourths. All right, so why don't you try to do C and D by yourself? If you get stuck and you're not sure what to do, you can always press play and walk through it with me, but I feel pretty confident that you can do C and D by yourself if you really give yourself the opportunity. All right, so hopefully you pause the video and you tried to do both of these by yourself. If you did not pause the video, I want you to do it now. It's really important that you try some of this by yourself. All right, so we have 16 times 3 eighths. Now, <clears throat> you might be thinking, well, I can't do 16 times 3 in my head. And you may have had to come over here and do this 16 times 3. Well, I know 6 times 3 is 18, and I know that 10 times 3 is 30, and 30 plus 18 is 48. So I've got 48 eighths. I'm still looking at the way I wrote eighths. wonder if that's how you spell it. So this is how you write 48 eighths. All right, so now let's try the next one. So I've got 6 times 5 eighths, which is 30 eighths, 
which gives me 30 over 8. Okay? All right, let's try the next one. So now we can just solve. We don't have to write this in unit form. I want you to think to yourself what happened every time we solved one of these whole numbers times a fraction. We learned that nothing happened to the units. The ninth stayed the same. So basically, we're just multiplying the whole number times a numerator. So we would have 28 ninths. And I would have 18 fifths. I want you to do C, D, E, and F by yourself. Pause the video and do them by yourself and then come back. Okay, so for C, you should have got 24 fourths. For D, you should have got 48 eighths. For E, let's see, 12 times 7, that would be 84 tenths. And 54 times 3, let's see, so 50 times 3 is 150. 4 times 3 is 12. That's 162 hundredths. Okay, let's do an application problem here. We're going to apply this concept to real life, okay? So let's take a look at what's going on here. Maria needs three-fifths of a yard of fabric for each costume. So do people really use fabric to make costumes? They do, not a whole lot, but when I was younger, my mom used to make some of my costumes and she would have to go to the store and she would have to buy fabric. So if you had to buy fabric, you really did have to know how to use fractions. So if she's going to make six costumes and she needs three-fifths of a yard for each costume, how much fabric does she need? So let's take a look at this for a minute. We're going to draw something. We're going to draw a tape diagram here. Now, I know sometimes you might think it's kind of boring to have to draw tape diagrams, but I just want you to just take a minute to make sure that you understand what's going on here. So I'm going to take this and divide it into six parts, and each part's going to represent one costume. So if I've got three-fifths for every costume, where is my question mark going to go in this tape diagram? Where's the part that I'm trying to figure out? Well, here's the part that I'm trying to figure out. I want to know the total. So what would my number sentence look like? I've got 6 times 3 fifths. So 6 times 3 fifths would be 18 fifths. Now here you have a choice. It hasn't told us in any of these problems so far to go from an improper fraction to a mixed number. It hasn't told us to do that. So if you said Maria needs 18 fifths yards of fabric, it would be correct. Okay, But for some reason, it's hard for me to write that because I know if I went to Walmart to buy fabric and I said I need 18 fifth yards, they would look at me like I was kind of crazy. So I'm going to change this to a mixed number. You don't have to, but I just think it makes more sense. So I know that I can get 15 fifths plus 3 fifths out of 18 fifths. So if I did a number bond right here, if I had more room, this would be 15 fifths and this would be 3 fifths. And 15 fifths is the same thing as 3 and then I add my 3 fifths. So Maria actually needs 3 and 3 fifths yards. But I would count this correct because it doesn't tell you to change it to a mixed number. But in real life, I would not go over to the Walmart counter and say, give me 18 fifth yards. I would say I need 3 and 3 fifth yards. Or actually in real life, I'd probably have to round that up when I bought it because you have to buy a whole yard or half a yard at a time. Okay, so hopefully you understand now what it means to say n times a over b just means a whole number times a fraction. And you'll notice that the denominator did not change in any of these problems.